Any questions? student of uh, physics and I want to raise three questions. First of all, is it a good idea to solely uh, find it on your research paper, especially in Indonesia itself? Our research fund is very, very little and it's become a major problem in a research field. And especially I felt some problem too, especially in theoretical fields such as theoretical physics or maybe nuclear physics it's very hard to learn the subject it's very hard to publish the subject especially into the international paper but I think our credits is not so much so is it, oh, is it a good idea to publish only one type of paper and solely become a funded person from the paper I hope that Gets. I hope you get the question because how, I love the. How do you want to become a funded person for a paper? You get money for the paper? Yes, I mean, sorry, get the money just from the paper, and not from teaching or maybe do another work. <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. I think I think you cannot support yourself from simply writing papers. Um, it's simply not not enough funds to to have a regular income. I know that uh, also in China, in, in some institutions, my colleagues get a certain amount of money for every paper they publish. Uh, they have a very low basic salary and this actually enhances their salary. Uh, so for them this is, is an incentive to publish many papers in good journals. Um, I think this is actually not a good incentive, but it works in some countries. But so, so if you've not got much experience in publishing, this is probably not the way to make a career. Thank you, sir. And the second one, when is the best time to publish our first paper? And what the skills that we need to even make it better? <laughs> what is the best time? Well, the best time would be when you have a solid piece of research that you think is more or less complete and then will add something nice to the literature that does not yet exist. How long does that take? That depends on your field. It might take, you know, a few months, it might take a few years. But it really depends on the field. The skills, well, okay. Yeah. Important skills are, of course, that you, you need to have the skills that are specific to your field. You need to be a good researcher. But that's not enough, right? Because you can do absolutely fantastic research if you cannot write it up properly so that other people can understand it, that's useless. You need to have the skills to compose a paper in the right format, um, such that other people in the field can read it and be uh, wowed by it, in essence, right? Um, now, you can work on that latter aspect. You can, if you have a very good paper that's very poorly written, you can work on that because you, there are services out there, and you now actually do that services to help you improve your your written paper. But if you have a very well written paper but the research is absolutely horrible, you will never get it published. Right? So the research skills are the most important. The language skills and the composition skills can be worked on uh, you know, at a later stage. And the last one, sir. Is there a, perhaps a, some way to have a better peer review on your paper? To have a better peer review? Yes. Uh, I guess it must be really hard for some people, especially on their first paper, to make a, a well-known paper to be published in an international journal, which need a peer review, and some of the peer reviews is indeed very harsh. Um, this is true. Let I will get back to this this afternoon. Are you going to be here this afternoon? Yes. Okay, let's, let's discuss that in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. That, that's, a, that's, that's quite a long answer, anyway. Thank you. Thank you there is a question over there. Maybe that's our last question before lunch.
karena nggak pengen mau. Oke, okay, thank you, Profesor. My name is Agus from Istanbul University. So, you mentioned about the name, which is Scopus. Scopus. We have here a huge problem, I mean, appearance about the Scopus. According to your best experience, what is actually Scopus is? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat the back for us? Okay, okay. We are here in this room, mostly our lecturers. I myself trapped on a big uh, phenomenon which is called on your also on the slide which is scopus scopus according to your best of experiences what is actually scopus is since we are all here in Indonesia every kind of research should be sent to scopus or indexing to scopus is it? so scopus scopus is a, is a large database containing uh, abstracts and general information about millions of articles, books, and conference proceedings. Um, it's all searchable, so you can search for keywords, you can search for authors, etc. There's a whole variety of ways to access each individual item in the database. Once you find something, a piece of work that you would like to check out in more detail, there are links to that piece of work. Some of them are hosted by Scopus, most of them are hosted really by the journals that actually published them originally. So it's like a, Scopus is it's like a clearing house. So it's a general database where you find the information that then allows you to go to the actual source of the information. Can you say that Scopus is the best indexing standards that you know? It's one of the larger ones. Uh, it has a very comprehensive uh, uh, number of Citable items in in it, so it's 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 a very it's a very appropriate uh, means of finding papers. But whether it's best, I don't know. It, it is it's certainly something I would recommend to use. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very last one. Thank you. Regarding to uh, regarding to the uh, predatory journals, uh, do you have the list of such journals? Because you mentioned that there are nine about nine hundred uh, predatory journals. We know that uh, Jeffrey Bell released uh, both predatory journals and predatory. Uh, publishers. However, uh, the website has been taken down, so we get lost. <laughs> uh, okay, let me say a few words about that. Yes, uh, they, until the beginning of this year, there used to be a, a large list, long list of potentially predatory journals maintained by uh, Jeffrey Beale, a librarian in Colorado, United States. He suddenly took that list offline in January. <coughs> I've read in the meantime that this was because his job was at stake. If he didn't take it down, he would lose his job. Um, it was a blacklist. Of, of, I think by the beginning of this year, there were about 15 or 1,600 journals on that list. Um, so Peel's list is no longer maintained or updated, but you can still access it through various internet search engines. So the, 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 the snapshot in January of this year is still accessible if you, if you search for it. Um, the question is, however, is a blacklist a good idea or should you go for whitelists? Whitelists like the directory of open access journals. Um, blacklists are controversial because perhaps some of the journals on that blacklist are not predatory, but they were just seen as predatory by Jeffy Beale. So there was a lot of controversy about this. I am aware of, of a company that's trying to do something similar to what Bill was doing, but I don't think it's available yet. And if it's, when it becomes available, it will be subscription-based. So at the moment, there is no such list as Bill's list that's up to date, but that's why we recommend you to, uh, to go through the think, check, submit process. Make, make up your own mind.